today's video, I want to share some common styling mistakes that I've made and then how I was able to fix them. By reflecting on old outfits and old styling practices, I've been able to figure out what's working and then ultimately what's not working and not get too stagnant. And it's really helped my style in the long run. Before we hop into it though, I want to thank Monica Venator for sponsoring today's video. We've worked together before, as you know, and I love their pieces because not only are Monica's pieces so beautiful, but everything is made from 100% recycled 18 karat gold vermeil and sterling silver, and they feature ethically sourced pearls, gemstones, and diamonds. And then all of the packaging is 100% recyclable. And all together, everything is just so beautiful and thoughtfully considered from start to finish. So I'm going to link everything that I'm styling in the description box down below, along with information for how you can get 20% off your order. So let's get started. The first styling mistake I want to go over is always buying my exact size and being really strict about how things are supposed to fit. So when I first started redoing my style and trying to figure out what my style was, I was doing a ton of research and looking at how clothing was supposed to look and how things were supposed to fit. And a lot of the information available is centered on a very classic type of dressing. And that's great for starting a foundation. And it gives you pieces that you'll be able to wear without feeling too trendy for many, many years. But what I've found in the past recent years and something that I've been trying to be a little bit more fluid with is considering if I want something to look very classic. Because if that's what I'm going for, going with those strict sizing guidelines is going to be perfect. But if instead I want things that feel a little bit more current or I want them to have a juxtaposition, going for things maybe a size or two up, a little bit oversized, slightly slouchy, that gives a totally different effect. And by mixing the two of them, I've been able to develop a style that feels very authentic. The next styling mistake I want to talk about is not keeping a theme within my jewelry. So overlooking the possibilities of repeating shapes or colors, the finish of things, and the overall silhouette. And it's something that I totally neglected and I've realized now is such an important part of my style. And I can't believe that I was ignoring it for so long. So one of my favorite ways to get dressed is to create a cohesive story and a really easy way to do that is to repeat your jewelry patterns and repeat those colors and those finishes and leaning into that has been such an enjoyable part of my style because I didn't realize how much I loved it and in my pursuit of a really timeless classic wardrobe I kind of forgot about jewelry and I would wear the same pair of earrings and the same one ring every single day. It created a lot of ease and simplicity simplicity, but removed a lot of the fun that I found in getting dressed. So as I've been leaning into that more, I've opened up a lot of possibilities for myself. And like I said, something that I totally overlooked and didn't realize was so important to me. And it's been so, so nice to rediscover. Another styling mistake that I was making, and I've recently been really conscious about trying to break, is following too many style rules, too many guidelines, and not allowing myself to be creative or get dressed in the moment. And try trust my instincts. And I think a lot of this comes about as I started creating videos on YouTube and generally trying to share my style. I was receiving so much feedback, a lot of it unsolicited. And by getting that feedback, I started to question what I actually liked. I was finding things that were like, you have to wear this and then don't wear this. And I stuck really aggressively to them. And in doing so, eliminated a lot of the creativity and didn't give myself that freedom of expression and almost started to feel as if I wasn't good enough. So I've been really trying to break that the last couple years, remove the noise, remove everything that I've learned and use what's helping and ignore what's not. The next styling mistake I want to talk about is keeping everything too perfect in my outfit. My hair needed to be exactly a certain way and styled a certain way. And then my outfit needed to follow suit. And this comes from seeing a lot of personal style and seeing people wearing things and just looking fantastic and me feeling like like I needed to do exactly that and be picture perfect. Otherwise there was no point. I remember even there was a time where I wore my hair down exclusively. And if my hair wasn't down and styled, there was no point in getting dressed and putting together a cute outfit. And that was so limiting to myself and to my style. And I broke free of that in the last year or two. And it's been so, so wonderful. So allowing my hair to be a little bit undone, 
uh, trying out different hairstyles and trying experiments with my clothing and not feeling like if things aren't pressed and perfect, there's no point in doing it is a really great way for me to approach style. And this last one is thinking that I'm not cool enough to wear certain things or that certain categories or certain types of clothing are off limits for me and they're not made for me. And this comes from the last couple years of really reflecting and I've learned that so much of that is self-imposed and I've been removing so many styling opportunities from myself. So I've totally removed those or tried to totally remove them and instead look at everything as an option for me. And then within that, be truly honest about what's speaking to me. I've also found that by removing these self-imposed limitations, I see so many more possibilities that can suit me as my style evolves and then ultimately as I evolve as a person. So like always, I hope that these are helpful and me sharing my own insight gives you insight into your own journey. Definitely feel free to share anything in the comments that you're personally working against or trying to change or how your style has evolved and how it's serving you now. Also, thank you again to Monica Venator for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to link everything in the description box along with how you can get 20% off. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.